Millionaires are moving to new countries, in some cases at an incredibly fast rate, popping up in new homes all around the world. Today I'm going to share with you some of the numbers and share with you why this is so important for your own diversification strategy. I recently came across an article uh, about the, what's called the New World Wealth Report, and they said that 88,000 of the world's millionaires will move to a new country at the end of this year. They didn't do the report in 2020 and 2021 due to the pandemic. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but it says high net worth individuals with a net worth of over $1 million are extremely mobile following the pandemic, as well as the current war in Ukraine, Ukraine with its global repercussions. Uh, and says that it should come as no surprise that Russians and Ukrainians are some of the biggest to see immigration, but that we're seeing immigration from countries all around the world, including places like the United States and other Western countries, where people have been increasingly mobile in the last couple of years as they see their freedoms going down and their taxes going up. So let's talk about that. Uh, if it's your first time here, I'm Andrew Henderson, founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consulting firm that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best. And that includes being uh, the millionaires who want to move somewhere else because you just don't feel like you're getting your money's worth anymore and you want to increase your personal freedom. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. The first thing that stands out to me, by the way, is lifelong entrepreneur, not much tolerance for excuses. Uh, I was traveling during the pandemic. Uh, I spent you know, six weeks in kind of a tough spot initially in Malaysia. I think the world was in a tough spot then. Things opened up relatively quickly and I traveled and pretty much avoided a lot of the nonsense. And so never had COVID once. Uh, and uh, the fact that there was a pandemic to me, listen, it was certainly there were some places you couldn't go. Uh, if you had residence permits, if you had citizenships already, that opened up more options, which is why it's always better to have those things set up in advance. Uh, but I've seen people all around. I mean, look at, look at real estate in, uh, in San Juan in Puerto Rico. Uh, real estate in Puerto Rico has gone through the roof, especially after Joe Biden got elected. People are moving down there. I see so many people in Mexico. Mexico is, is teeming with people from all around the world, especially Americans. Dubai, property prices have almost doubled in the last year and change. Lisbon was just in Lisbon. Everybody knows uh, what we're talking about here. Even Kuala Lumpur, places are making it onto the radar. And so this idea that, oh, I can't move because of the pandemic, somehow some people always have a reason why they can't move. And I think this is why you're seeing more millionaires moving because things have finally gotten bad enough. People realize what I've been saying for a long time, uh, that being a citizen, resident, uh, you know, financial asset holder of just one country is not a great idea. Uh, the other thing I noticed I stood, stood to me was the narrative, of course, is Russia and Ukraine. And yet uh, there are folks in the U.S. One attorney said that the U.S. is, quote unquote, trying to stem the flow of expatriation. You couldn't give up your citizenship during much of the pandemic, or you could only do it in a very limited number of embassies that most people weren't aware of. Uh, and so now it's open again. And now the numbers are like tripling and people are trying to get out of the United States. And somehow, whatever you think of Russia and Ukraine, um, I think the narrative from a lot of wealthy Russians is, hey, maybe we don't agree with this guy, but he's not going to be here forever. And so why give up our citizenship? Because we could just live overseas and there's not this kind of long arm of the law following us. Maybe we just don't go back to Russia, but we can be Russian citizens overseas. Yes, it has become more toxic uh, for folks born in Russia, but not in a lot of parts of the world, quite frankly. And so is it interesting that after all the Cold War, here we are now, um, you know, a couple of decades later, and it is the Americans who don't want their citizenship because it is more toxic on a global scale. No doubt if you're Russian, uh, even people who are dual citizens in parts of Europe are having some trouble um, with their bank accounts, for example. And that's not the first country, by the way. There's people in Canada that were from places like Iran, from Iraq. They're Canadian citizens. And the bank didn't want them anymore. They just closed their accounts. So certainly Western countries do tend to be kind of judgmental, even if you're one of their own citizens. That's what you get. That's what, the, that's what you get for paying them all that money is you get kicked out of banks, for example. Uh, but interesting that U.S. citizenship is more toxic. Now, let's talk about the numbers here. How many millionaires there are is hard to count. There's different metrics. By one metric, I saw like 15 million millionaires in the U.S., um, even 22 million, uh, 5 million was one metric. So I think that what people look at it differently is, do you have a million liquid or is it just like equity in your house? Right? There's a difference, right? You have equity in your house, you could certainly take all that out. You're seeing how hundreds of real estate markets now are predicted to drop. Uh, in both the US, it's already happening in Canada, it's already happening in Australia. Uh, we told you, hey, maybe you want to cash it at the top and consider taking that, that, that home, that, that big pot of money and going and buying a property cash somewhere else. Hopefully some of you did that. Um, but there's millions of millionaires in the United States. One statistic uh, on the global level said 56.1 million worldwide, up from 
uh, before the pandemic, and about half a million to 600,000, that's what they call ultra high net worth individuals, $30 million. So it's hard to get everybody on the same page because of how they define a millionaire and how they define uh, net worth. And so out of those numbers, 88,000 people moving, which I always think these numbers are low, like how do they track every single person moving, right? It's not like you go to the post office and hey, I'm moving send my mail to Miami from now on. Um, so it is harder. The numbers that they put out you know, in the US for a long time were like six or seven million people who were living overseas. I think it was actually a lot more because I think that when you look at statistic people and government people, they don't look at a digital nomad, for example, or perpetual travel, even what I did years ago, where you just kind of live around the world, right? I don't, I've never registered with the US embassy when I was a US citizen. I have, because I have much friendlier embassies to call now, I have talked to the local embassies uh, of my new uh, citizenship countries, but um, I never called the US embassy. I don't know how they would know, other than, okay, they look at my, my tax return and say, okay, uh, he doesn't live here. But I think the numbers are, are always underrated. But here's what we're seeing. That number is bigger than it's ever been almost. And so, yes, they're claiming Russians and Ukrainians are driving this, but let's talk about how uh, 2,000 people renounced their U.S. citizenship in the first half of 2022, um, and that number is increasing. It is, again, a tripling from what happened uh, in 2021. And so Americans are voting. Uh, some of those people may be kind of middle income. They may have a couple million dollars, and they live in Canada, or they live somewhere where it's just like, hey, we've got a good quality of life here. We don't need to come back to the U.S., or we can come back with our other passport, uh, and just the tax systems don't match up. But you've also got a lot of folks who are just like, yeah, I'm making a lot of money trading stocks. I'm making a lot of money, a lot of money trading crypto. I'm, you know, just why do I want this, this global financial surveillance following me around? You also have, I think, a, a less of a left-right divide in a country like the U.S. You have some folks who are saying, wait, you're getting rid of Roe v. Wade? I'm, what are you talking about? I'm not going to live in this country anymore. There is some of that. And perhaps on the other side, as people would see it, um, as if all these issues have to be left versus right. That's a very American thing that you'll probably lose when you, when you go overseas. Um, you have people like, yeah, the, the taxes. They keep raising the taxes. They keep being anti-business. They keep adding more regulations. Uh, this is affecting millionaires. And so you have, in my mind, countries where um, they want capital. They want people. They want talent. The countries that during the pandemic said, we're not going to raise taxes. Uruguay said that. Malaysia said that. Others have said that. You've seen countries offering tax incentives. They may not have come in and said we're not going to raise taxes in the local population, but you've seen more countries, uh, including many in Southern Europe, come out with tax incentives and say, hey, please come here. We'll even give you money to come here. And then you have the countries where people are leaving. Uh, listen, Russia, we talked about, very poorly timed in late February. We'd, we'd, we'd pre-made a video about how they've got a kind of a flat tax if you have offshore companies. Sure, you can, you can be Russian, you can live there, uh, and you can, you can pay a nominal amount of tax if you have businesses offshore. Um, but, you know, Russia's lower tax, but it's still tax, and it's cold. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, those people are leaving, but I'm seeing more people leaving um, from the West. And so those are the numbers, 88,000 out of, again, by up to 56.1 million. I think more people are realizing that. And again, if I look at just anecdotally, who comes up to me uh, wherever I go, uh, it is getting stronger. Now, our brand is stronger, but also uh, the number of people who are just interested in this you go to Portugal, uh, you hear a lot of people speaking English right now. You go to Mexico, you hear a lot of people speaking English. It's in the news that they're complaining too many people coming and speaking English. That is becoming a trend. So we need, the world's going to have to work out all the people who are just going and living in different places. But I mean, property prices in Portugal um, have, have risen dramatically over the last couple of years because people with money to spend are moving. And so the question is, why are these millionaires moving? I don't think 88,000 people are a bunch of malcontents, right? And again, I think the number is actually much higher by order of magnitude. They're leaving because it's not getting their value. And it's starting to become apparent through the pandemic, through remote work, through all the stuff we talk about, that you can go where you're treated best and that you've got 251 other countries and territories that you can choose from. And so if yours isn't treating the best, why would you stay there? If you're in an abusive relationship, you should leave. If you're eating a restaurant where they throw the food at you, and are rude, you shouldn't go back. And why is that never extended to what you're doing in your country where you pay them a bunch of money and then, oh, yeah, sorry, we're not gonna let you bank here anymore. That's happening right now to some people and it's happened for years to others. Yeah, that's maybe a good reason to be like, screw this, I'm gonna go where I'm wanted, right? They've restricted your freedoms, they're taking more of your money, it's just all around, we've talked about this, but the point is millionaires are moving. Uh, it's a growing number every year, and the point is you can be one of them. The cost to move, the cost to get a residence permit, not that high.
especially in places like Latin America, Eastern Europe. If you want to start it even cheaper, get a digital nomad visa. Get yourself out there and see what these millionaires are experiencing. Make it more, I think the best way to start, make it more of like a one-year pledge than a vacation. If you can do that, I think you'll see why all these millionaires are moving and you will want more.